Okay, so this week I'm gonna do a film review uh, because I ended up watching this documentary and then I kind of went down a rabbit hole with it. So rather than just like wasting all that effort, I thought I would share that information with you guys. I do think that it's actually really good. Uh, he focuses mostly on dairy, you know, milk production by the cows and that whole process of that. In the film, I don't know if it's once or twice, you see like a dairy farmer like um, counting all his wads of money. And I thought to myself, well, you know, what I've heard is that there's actually a lot of dairy farms going out of business. So I read this USDA report that talks about the consolidation of dairy farms, and it was put out just recently and provided a lot of information um, on that end, which I'd like to share some of that with you. Let's take a look at this. So first of all, my whole question about our dairy farms farmers really making all of this money. And if you look at this figure here, this is net returns by herd size 2005 to 2018. It shows the different herd size from 50 to 100 all the way up to um, categories of a thousand or more. And the smallest farms are all well below zero in net returns over this whole period of time. And even most of all, the, the other herds um, are below that zero mark. And then you'll see some of the largest herds popping up above that. Now we have the 2009 recession here. But if you look at this other graph here, it kind of breaks out. You know, it shows that actually there are some small farms that are making money. Right down here, it's a very small percentage, it, like say 8.6% of those farms are actually making some money. And um, so, and then there are larger size farms that tend to make more money. But still, overall, the, they're not, this isn't an industry, a money making industry. So, it is true that, that some of these bigger farms, there might be some of these bigger farms, I mean, some of them have gone bankrupt, but some of them may be making wads of money. So, you know, there is that. And I looked at this figure here where it says US milk cows and milk production. And as you can see, what you would think would be happening here if we're losing a bunch of dairy farms that the number of cows are going down and they did go down from 1980 to, I don't know what, 1990 or something. And then after a while, slowly kind of leveled off. And at the same time though, milk production has steadily gone up. So how does that make sense when we're actually losing farms? And what's happening is that we are getting a consolidation of very big farms. So we've got these really big herds and they, rather than milking them maybe twice a day, they're milking them three times a day. So they're getting more milk out of these cows. So it says here, the number of US dairy farms has been shrinking, even as milk production continues to increase. There were 74,100 licensed dairy herds in the United States in 2002. The number of herds fell to 34,187 by 2019. That's more than half in that amount of time what, about 20 years. And it also says here on this page that um, the pace of consolidation in dairy exceeds that in most of U.S. agriculture. Consolidation in U.S. crop production was widespread across crops and was persistent over time. Over 30 years, consolidation in crops doubled. The equivalent measure in dairy shows a 16-fold increase in consolidation in 30 years. In livestock, consolidation in hogs and in eggs occurred at a pace similar to the pace of dairy, but consolidation in other livestock sectors lagged far behind. So whereas in the past, these dairy farms were kind of smaller to medium size and you didn't have as many of these really big farms, now it says uh, today the largest dairy farms in the country milk more than 25,000 cows. I mean, we were talking about they used to measure what, you know, herds over a thousand cows, and now we're talking about 25,000 cows, usually organized into a series of pods comprised of cow barns or lots, manure storage units, feed bunkers, and milking facilities. And in the documentary, you see these little hutches for the um, 
female baby cows and there's just like so many of them and that's where we've gotten now with these huge herds. So it talks here about the difference between large and small dairy farms. They use different production practices and it's important to account for those differences in assessing costs and returns. Large farms rely heavily on hired labor, while small, small farms use little hired labor, relying instead on family provided labor. While almost all dairy farms purchase at least some of the feed used for their cows, large farms rely more heavily on purchased feed. Um, it's above 80% for the largest farms. Since most farms also rely heavily on homegrown feed, it's important to properly account for the cost of homegrown feed to the dairy enterprise. While some large farms graze their cows on pasture for at least some of the year, most do not. Their cows are confined within barns or lots on the farm. Most small operations, in contrast, graze their cows for at least part of the year. So as these operations are getting bigger and bigger and consolidating, the the way that the cows are living, you know, becomes worse and worse for the most part. So then they talk about kind of who is leaving the dairy industry and they talk about age being a large part of that. Since most dairy farms are family businesses, the age of the operators also plays a role in decisions regarding continued operation of a business. Dairy farmers as a group are getting older. The average age of dairy farmers was 54 in 2016 and 49 in 2000. That was back 16 years before. Moreover, 30% were 60 or older in 2016 compared to 20% in 2000. So it's the older farmers that are typically leaving the business, although that doesn't mean that that's the case and, and that's the, always the case. You know, there could be people who are leaving the business because they just can't make it anymore and they may not be retiring out of it. This report is mostly in all this previous section talking about conventional farming. They do touch on organic dairies and the difference in how much organic dairies make. And they do typically make more, their costs are higher, but they sell their product for more. And, um, but still the, the smallest farms are still not breaking even. And um, they do say that, you know, most organic dairies are on the smaller side of herds and they do are required, have requirements to have pa access to pasture and things like that. But in the dairy production, as you see in the documentary, that still means taking away baby calves from their mothers and all the other things that are, are involved with it as far as that. So what the federal government has been doing is they've been trying to help these small to medium sized dairy farms, they have been expanding, you know, their support programs. This report shows that this consolidation of dairy herds is going to continue into the future. And we're going to continue to see small and medium sized dairy farms go out of business. This report talks about the first, it says dairy consolidation has had wide ranging impacts. Consolidation has led to low prices for milk and for dairy products. Lower dairy product prices benefit consumers and have made U.S. dairy products more competitive in international markets, leading to more commercial dairy exports. However, lower prices for farm milk has placed financial pressure on higher cost and usually smaller dairy producers. Um, then it talks about the environmental costs. Manure production has become concentrated, creating water and air risks from excess nutrients and leading to expanded local, state, and federal regulatory interventions. And I did a video on, um, you know, where the manure goes. Uh, most large dairy operations now come under federal regulations aimed at management of manure effluence under the Clean Water Act. So I even went further down the rabbit hole and you might be wondering why am I going into so much detail looking into this? And this is the reason why. If we don't really understand the problem, then we're not going to come up with the right solutions. And my two big questions are, is dairy a dying industry or is dairy just a changing industry? Because if dairy is a dying industry, then we should be 
helping farmers transition to something different. Um, rather than waiting around and doing kind of nothing or trying to limp the businesses along, you know, and see something like what happened in the 1980s as farms consolidated. But if dairy is just changing and it's just gonna be bigger farms, then that's a different problem. That's just a different problem with different answers. So I took a look at some other things here. USDA ERS report trends in US per capita consumption of dairy products from 1970 to 2012. When you look at the total, you can see that dairy has in pounds has declined from 339 to 275. But if you look in more detail, that's mostly influenced by fluid milk and cream, which was down from 273 to 198 over that time period. But look at butter. Although it was going down more recently, it's come up. Um, Cause you see the same thing in cheese here too, which would be part of that. That has gone actually quite a, quite a ways up, more than doubled in consumption. And so then frozen dairy products has gone down and evaporated and condensed milk and dry dairy products has also gone down, contributing to that overall number. So then we looked at earlier graphs where it showed that actually production has gone, of milk has gone up. So where is that additional milk going? Global supply and demand conditions, as well as government policy changes, contribute to long-term growth of U.S. dairy exports. So this is from Tuesday, March 20th, 2018. So it hasn't been affected by, you know, like COVID numbers, which would have maybe changed that. U.S. dairy product exports grew from 1.4 billion in 2000 to 7 billion in 2014, about a sevenfold increase. Income growth in East Asia, Southeast Asia, Latin America, and other regions has led to increased dairy consumption and demand. And so you can see over here in this graph where the demand is coming from. And then this other story up here, um, U.S. dairy products imported by Southeast Asia rose in rank and value from 2006 to 2018. So this is from 2021. And it just shows you um, who the largest exporters are or where the largest exporters to Southeast Asia, that's New Zealand, European Union, and then we're around, this is the United States and Australia, about, about the same amounts. So we've become a pretty big dairy exporter. And there's another story here talking about exports in the Wisconsin Agriculturist. Um, over the past decade, exports have been absorbing most of the growth in U.S. milk production from 2007 through 2014. The U.S. exported 79% of domestic dairy increase. The 2018 Farm Bill will offer substantial protection for dairy farmers milking 300 cows or less, he said, but medium-sized farms with between 500 to 2,000 cows will be under considerable pressure. Large dairies with 2,000 cows or more will be fine due to advantage of size and scale. That leads me to the question that I couldn't get a good answer for, which is, I've been reading some things that said that despite the fact that the federal government is trying to help these smaller farms, that actually most of government support is going to these larger size farms. But I couldn't confirm that. And I also, that doesn't mean that like there aren't some really big farms that are actually making a profit without government help. And so if that's the case, then those farms are gonna be able to weather this storm, come out the other end, and then we're going to be a dairy of really big farms and an, an exporter of dairy in addition to domestic sales. Whereas if all of these farms, even the larger farms are taking some amount of government assistance, then if those policies, government policies were to change, then that would change the industry. And, and it would indicate that this is an industry that's really dying that, and that can only stay on its own 
four feet or whatever, two feet, whatever, um, because of government help. In the documentary, he talks about one program called Farmed, where it helps dairy farmers transition to what, growing oats and making oat milk. Um, but that's, you know, a small organization there. And then I was reading about, um, in Dairy Reporter, Miyoko's Creamery wants to turn dairy farms to plant-based. The economy is changing. It says, um, the creamery has been producing plant-based dairy alternatives in the U.S. since 2014. Vegan cheese alternatives and butter alternatives made from a base of cashews sourced from Vietnam and they're sold nationwide. The company is now looking to expand with a new line of cheese alternatives made from potatoes and legumes grown in the U.S. In this process, she is seeking out new plant farmers to work with and support. She told Dairy Reporter that she had noticed more and more farms collapsing or choosing to close down. In January 2019, she spoke at the International Dairy Foods Association and said a switch to plant agriculture can be how dairy farmers stay true to their land and become part of the solution for a sustainable future. So there's another example, but you've got then just these um, kind of private, either commercial or other organizations that are trying to do this. When we have so many dairy farmers and so this something like this would need to be handled on kind of a bigger scale. And, and so then the federal government, rather than, you know, kind of subsidizing dairies and limping them long, could be helping to be part of this transition. So I think that this documentary is good in being part of this transparency. There were some things that I didn't really like in the documentary, some little things here and there, like even at the beginning where there's this jar of milk and there's blood coming down on it, you know, it, it doesn't need to be over dramatized, you know, it's already, it is what it is. And a person can just see and make up their own mind. And so if you're interested in knowing what goes on with dairy production, I think this is a good um, film to watch, watch it all the way through. Um, because there's some hard, hard parts to watch, but I think it's important to see it all. Uh, um, yeah, and that's it. I may try and find, you know, some answers to some of these dairy questions, but I think I need to wrap this video up and um, get it out there. And I will see you guys next week.